today we're gonna to walk through how to make a mode switching prototype. So check this out. We are gonna make it so that Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle can evolve from unevolved to first evolution and second evolution. This is gonna be a really fun tutorial, so let's do it. The real value here is not simply to make a Pokemon slider, it's also to be able to handle modes. See, inside of Figma, there's variable modes, and you can do things like this where you've got a light mode, and you can switch every screen in your whole section into a dark mode screen. As long as you're setting things up with variables and you're assigning those variables properly, then those are going to automatically switch over once you flip it over. The only thing is, is as you can see, uh, Figma is a little slow sometimes when you've got this many screens that you're making movements on. Uh, so just, you know, bear with it. But when we're working with a small thing such as this, it's gonna be very simple to be able to build. So the first thing that we need to do is to turn these guys into components. So we've got all of these inside of a frame and there's also the images live inside of the frame. They're all the same size, so if I switch over here, you can see that they're all 144 by 144. And we're going to select all of them, head up here, instead of pressing this button, we're gonna press just this little carrot right next to it and create a component set. So the only trouble is, is you can see here that there's a conflicting variance, and that's because every single one of these is named property one default. So we're gonna go ahead and create some properties that sort this out to be able to make it so that we can flip all these things over. So first, what we wanna say is our evolution stage. So we'll call this evolution on the property. You can rename those by double clicking, by the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and name this one zero. One, two. Now, why did I just call that a zero, one, two? Well, uh, in code and the, to developers, they start from the index of zero, not from one. You could easily just pull this one, two, and three, uh, but for this case, you know, uh, th this might be something that you actually use in the real world with like array selectors and actually set things up to be able to help developers go build something quicker. And so, uh, you know, let's just practice what we preach and start with a zero, one, two. And so same thing over here, we're gonna do zero. I'm gonna press the tab, one, two, zero, one, and two. Okay, cool. So we've got, we're on the way, but we're still conflicting. And that's because, you know, all three of these are the same name according to the component. So what we need to do is create another property that makes it so that these are unique variants. So instead of just having evolution, we're going to press this plus button. We're going to create another variant, and we will name this, uh, let's call this uh, Bulbasaur. And we'll call all of these, we'll set all of them to false as the default. So now everything is false, 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 right? But over here, it is true. And these two are also true. So I'm going to grab both of those and not by holding shift while clicking, and then I'm going to hit true. And now we've got zero, one, two, true. Okay, let's do the same thing with Charizard. Or I guess that's Charmander, right? Grab these three. Charmander true. And we'll create another property variant. We'll call this Squirtle. Go ahead and grab these three. Call them true. Oh shoot. I just realized that the default on Charmander was set to, to default. We want those to be false. So, ah, shoot, and look at that. The, looks like these guys have the Squirtle as set to default. These should be false. Now, the reason for that, let me explain why, is when I pull this guy out, you see how this is a toggle switch? Isn't that so awesome to have a toggle switch? Well. The trouble is, is whenever you have uh, true and something else, it's not gonna switch automatically to a switch. But if I can go over here and I grab all these and instead of default, we call them false. And since this side is true, there is only true and false on these toggles and everything is a toggle automatically. You could also choose to, instead of these three be being, you know, three different properties, you could easily just say, you know, Pokemon will set the default to Bulbasaur 
And then these three are going to be Charmander. And then these three are going to be Squirtle. It's essentially the same thing, right? So uh, the trouble, or the thing for me is why I love building w w these little booleans is I could, instead of having to do two clicks where I have to go in here and search for it, I could easily just toggle, press this toggle, look for Bulbasaur right here. Yep, there it is, press the toggle. So that's why I like to work off of a Boolean true false statement, especially if, if it's only two options, right? Sometimes there's like 10 options and you just gotta have a drop down. But if I can avoid it, I like to. So, okay, now the only thing is, is to set our evolution stage. So now we'll, all we need to do is go in here and we're gonna create a new collection. And we're gonna call this collection uh, Pokemon Evolution, okay? We're going to create a variable and we're gonna have a number variable and we'll call this uh, evolution stage, stage. Eh, yeah, let's call it evolution stage. And uh, yeah, okay, we'll set the value to zero, perfect. So uh, over here, even if I'm at, I'm at two, I'm gonna hover over here and there's this little icon right here. This allows me to assign a variable from our variables into this, this thing. And so I'm gonna pull up evolution stage as the option and perfect, it's swapped over. Now we can switch it to one, or to two, great, looking good. So, you know, we can create a prototype out of this if we wanted to, uh, but for this purpose, we are going to just work with the frames and the, and the sections, okay? So, we're going to just go ahead and grab a section. I, the hotkey for that is Shift S. You could also press this caret right here and get the section. I'm gonna grab this, put it here. We'll call this, uh, non-evolved okay bring it in here and the the thing is is you can't set variable assignments unless there's a thing inside of it which has a variable assignment so now i can go in here and there's nothing here why um because we don't have variable modes so we need to set up our modes to be able to swap this into a different mode right because that's the thing that sections work off of is you're not setting a new value to this you're switching to a new uh, variable mode so we'll call this uh non-evolved we'll call this uh sorry and then and then we're going to press this plus button right here and we're going to call this first evolution and then we're going to scroll over again and press the plus again second evolution we'll drag this out just so that you can see it better so there we go. So we've got non-evolved, first evolution, second evolution. We just need to make sure to update these numbers to zero, one, and two, okay? And yeah, so now you can see that it already updated to Bulbasaur instead of Ivysaur, or Venusaur, sorry. Uh, but, and so now that we're sitting inside of a section, we, this little toggle is gonna pop up right here. You see this, this little toggle, it's now showing up. If I was to detach this and just bring it back to a like a uh, manual selection, the toggle's no longer there. See, so you have to have something that exists as a variable and is assigned a variable in order, and that variable has to have a mode to be able to make sure that that you can manually set stuff from the from like the section level, right? So now that it's in there, we're going to switch this over. We're gonna, we're going to call this non evolved. Then we're going to bring this out. We're going to set this again to first evolution holding alt dragging again to duplicate and we'll set this instead of first evolution we'll call it second evolution and here we go let's see what happens yes look at that isn't that so cool so how do we make it work for these guys well we just duplicate this out by holding alt and switch on our charmander do it again and switch on our Squirtle. And we'll tidy this up. Here we go. Are you ready? You're gonna have some fun. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. Dope. Just gonna clear this up so that it's like extra emphasis. Boom, rad, 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 rad. Cool, do you like that? Did you get something out of this? I think you did. I think you should. You should have. Now the other side too is, uh, I just wanna like kind of Bring this bring this idea home of of this mode assignment is so you know over here i've got 
you know, pages set up. These are, this is my file where I'm creating all these tutorials, but you could have a dark mode or a light mode or US localization versus UK localization versus France, right? And now, and, and so you could actually set this at the page level by, by going up here, uh, you know, so you have to deselect everything. And then right here above the page color, we're gonna swatch, swap this into first evolution or second evolution. This, the good thing is, is sections still override this. So uh, as long as you're working with sections, and this is actually why I like to assign stuff at the section level, is sometimes you move something to a new page and you're like, wait, what's happening, right? Uh, so I set this to default and then I work with sections to be able to set those assignments, right? And, uh, and then that's it. Last thing is if you want to use it inside of a frame. So let's say that this is like an actually mock-up, right? Like a phone game or something like that that, that you've got for your Pokemon. Well, you can assign the same uh, thing right here. So you can assign it automatically to first, second, and third. Now, once you do this, though, it's not going to update, right? But if I was to set this back to auto, it will update. So that's another thing is like the leave it as default as much as you can and then work with sections because sections are just better to be able to work with modes uh makes it more future proof for your workflows um yeah okay cool well what i'd love to see uh they just dropped this new feature figma did i'd love to see as a challenge for you if you want to go ahead and make a game that will automatically evolve your your pokemon now obviously it won't be a game right it'll be like a button that evolves or devolves it right uh, but how would you do that? Well, uh, you need to set a new uh, f a working point, uh, interaction point, and the the there is a thing where you can set variable modes, right? So you'll set the variable modes and swap it over off of that that interaction point. So would love to see you make some stuff like that. I think uh, that would be a really fun challenge to be able to see what you can come up with. And uh, yeah, maybe even go make some more Pokemon if you were following around, along and building this out. What could you do to make another set of Pokemon? Have a great day. Thanks so much. Hope you got something out of this. See you on the next one.